Welcome back. Uh, hope you enjoyed your afternoon dose of caffeine. Uh, we have a very interesting topic in session, telco network analysis and customer experience management on top of data lake. Here to give us more insight about how telcos can create additional value out of their data by implementing the concept of data lake and collecting data from different sources into central data repository. Please welcome Goran Pavlovich, integration architect at VIP Mobile. Goran will be joined by Darko Marjanovic, CEO of Things Solver. May I add, I'm always very happy to see a large corporation working with a startup and showcasing their successful projects. Uh, I would, uh, I would uh, remind the audience to pose their questions through our platform and gentlemen, the floor is yours. <laughs> thanks for the introduction and uh, yeah thank you all for coming back here because you know when I saw the the uh, agenda being second day after lunch I was expecting like you know when you end up, when you end up in the, in the second page of Google results no, nobody comes there no, nobody goes there thank you um, Darko and I will be talking about um, two use cases we developed in VIP mobile uh, two, so, two softwares we developed based on uh, based on uh, big data technologies, and uh, to begin with, uh, some things that you can find all over internet about big data that it's a I don't know new oil, it's a new currency, new gold, and the last one I heard from a colleague from Austria that uh, was a keynote speaker this morning uh, was that. Uh, Big data is uh, data is the is a new bacon, and this one this was uh, a little bit frightening because you know my first thought was, okay, telco is going to be killed by the high cholesterol. You know we have tons of it. We have uh, like besides the most obvious, like um, the tower, the cells, the antenna. Uh, that's for average person you know telco is antenna uh, we have hundreds of systems interfaces applications uh, that just produce terabytes of this bacon in real time every day and lucky for us and for our cholesterol uh, for for years or decades uh, we you know we've been just storing it in, in different silos like technology, finance, logistics, marketing, sales. Uh, there are colleagues from HR, so they will forgive me for if, if I forgot some. You know, I, I'm not sure if this is really uh, the, the the structure of the company. So, please, don't don't invite me tomorrow to, to the interview. Uh, the thing was that, uh, you know, finance talked to technology only when they complained that we are too expensive. Uh, technology. Even the technology itself is split into several domains like uh, radio, IT, BSS, OSS, and all that. Uh, so when all the hype around big data, being digital, being data-driven uh, uh, became live, became reality, uh, the only or the obvious or logical step for us uh, was to go for a nice, big data lake putting all the data inside and just leaving a little bit of you know like small oil plant just in case this thing with data fails and this is exactly what we didn't do uh, for several reasons uh, sorry one of the reasons was we didn't have an infrastructure it's too expensive although it's commodity hardware but it's you know they say it's commodity hardware but in the end it's it's, it's expensive uh, the other thing was we didn't know how to do it, so we uh, we started uh, with some guys that knew how to do it. And uh, the third thing, uh, we asked some people that were ahead of us in this story, and they told us that that was the only advice: don't start with all, don't start with everything. It will become uh, even more complex, even more complicated. You will not get any value of it. <coughs> so uh, we started like big data in small steps finding two use cases uh, that had real problem to solve. So there was really uh, a real business need uh, to use big data uh, to solve the problems. And the problems were in sales customers and sales department, customer service and radio network 
I'm in IT. I know nothing about sales, customer service, and radio network. Uh, you know, sales guys always, always trick me. I buy something. Uh, and uh, the main driver for these uh, for these two projects, use cases, I'll call them projects, because use cases are within them, was the rollout of the product called Home Internet, or Home Box, or just, yeah, Home Internet, like those boxes, uh, based on LTE, that had like unlimited, uh, unlimited data, they were as fast as our network is, and uh, they supported up to 32 devices, I think that was the first first uh, router that we were selling supported up to 32 devices and in the beginning it was all fine the sales the sales started good it was fine like new customer new customer but then when when sales started reaching their targets and when they exceeded their, their targets um, due to the way this these devices consume our network versus the phone users uh, started, started. They, they need. They just need more resources. Uh, they started, uh, you know, raising alarms in sales, customer service, and radio. So sales didn't know where to sell because they didn't want to put in danger existing customers uh, because of uh, you know, a network capacity. Uh, customer service started receiving all new weird quest questions from these customers that they were not prepared for. It was. They had to. Uh, they had to use like, I don't know, four, six, seven different tools. They had to contact uh, each time uh, technical teams to, to to support the customers. And for radio, it's obvious. You know, you have problems in uh, in network. You need to serve these two guys. You need to support them, and you, you need to run the <coughs> the network. <coughs> and then we came up with the first tool, SARA, Network Analytics, with uh, three goals. Uh, the, the, the main one was to, to support sales, to give them uh, real-time information uh, whether they can or cannot sell uh, these cubes at a specific location. And uh, the, the, the return, uh, and the other thing was uh, for network to, you know, not to stop selling, but to uh, expand the, the, the network. Uh, we went even a step further uh, with the prediction uh, whether we are going to be able to sell in a week or two at, at the specific uh, at a specific location, uh, and then, w then these guys together with network uh, went into deeper into network, finding uh, anomalous cells, uh, finding bad configuration, doing, doing clustering, and uh, that stuff that I didn't understand at that time. Uh, and the last thing we are doing now is uh, adding finance component into this uh, into this application to support our senior directors in in, in making some. Let's say strategic decisions in uh, based on again big data. With this one, we sold uh, alarms in uh, sales and radio, and then it was the next one that sold the uh, um, complexity in uh, customer service, where we introduced uh, uh, more data sources. Uh, it was a bit, you know, data engineering, not really data science, but putting uh, really connecting uh, different systems uh, that reduced four to seven tools into one tool in most cases, not all cases, but in, in, in most cases. And that, that was the f uh, simplification part and on the, on the efficiency part in customer service, uh, they, they, they became nine times faster. Like before they had, they needed like 45 minutes in average to serve the customer. Now they are able to do it in five minutes for home users, not, not, not for all users. And uh, for non-telco people, these names don't mean probably nothing. Even for me, uh, these first four and the last three meant nothing because they lived in another silo. Uh, Atoll and Ritsu, Netak, Triavi, that's all network. Maybe I even, if there is someone from network, maybe I even uh, misspelled some of them. Uh, but the point is we put all this together and they were all across the company. And the key was to do, to do this in a uh, multi-domain. So we had experts from radio, we had experts from IT, and we had uh, Darko and his team uh, to put this all together. 
And uh, about the volume, we are now processing around two terabytes per day. I don't know for you if this is big or small. For me, it's big since, I don't know, a couple of years back, I had to go through the procedure of uh, getting approvals from a couple of uh, directors or uh, to just to extend the database uh, space for a couple of gigabytes. Uh, even after putting all this together, we are still not at the nice picture with the oil factor in the middle. It's not there, but we are we are on, on the good way uh, by defining the, the the future proof scalable architecture that supports new use cases in the same way. So in the in, in the same environment. Uh, we established this way of work that's, uh, uh, that, that I mentioned earlier, uh, working in multi-domain. So these, those four, first four uh, systems were a total black box, black box for me. Now I'm, you know, a little bit in, in gray area, understand them a little bit. And uh, we had customer service and sales with, sales with us all the time. So they, they were getting, giving us constant feedback, like what's good, what they need. Uh, th does it meet their their expectations? Uh, we are building new features into both of these tools. There is a roadmap for at least six months. From even now, more. we're even more. even more. And this is not all. We are uh, we are working on some other use cases that will hopefully bring us back next year here at the data science conference. It will be five. Um, with this, uh, I will hand over to Darko to, to tell you a little bit more about uh, interesting stuff here, like what other te technologies that they use, that we used, and what's the architecture that I just mentioned here. So, Darko, yeah. the stage is yours. Thank you. Hello again. Um, as Goran mentioned, we want to not at least uh, at once to build the whole data lake. We want to go step by step but we want to define uh, architecture that can be used not this year and next year, but to stand a couple of years in the future and just to build uh, new, new applications like uh, building blocks. So this is, uh, this is the, let's say, something that we came up, like uh, reading on the internet with the previous experience, and we define this is the way we want to build uh, our data lake and uh, how we want to build our applications. So we have the data lake or smaller lake. I don't know how to yeah. say it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we want to have stable data integration layer. So we have uh, exposed all the data that is there. Now there's a lot of systems, Igor mentioned, Billing, uh, CRM, uh, VRV, that's a lot of, lot of data. And on top of that, we want to build all the applications because it's important to do that case by case, not creating the project that is like five-year project and you do nothing. You, you need to be agile. And this was a really test for us and for even for Vipmobile because they're a big company and we're a small company. So... We find uh, some, in the, some way in the middle. So Sarah lives on the data lake and uh, Sarah uh, back data to the data lake again. So it's com communicate in both way with, uh, with lake, yeah? Also the customer experience management tool. So they can, can, they can communicate with each other. Don't need to have duplicate data. You just go like this. We have a single, single source of true. So the yesterday, ne uh, yesterday net act data, that's OSS, OSS data is the same for Sarah and for Sam. So you need to keep, uh, keep uh, that things, uh, to do that uh, things very carefully. And also we have other applications for transport analytics and we want the next use case, not applic next applications to add like building blocks. So just just put them on top. And on top, uh, we really believe in the REST API, like a communication layer. So you can even build maybe some smaller applications on top of that. Maybe someone will took the Sara API and build a new new 
new model and add it to, to existing infrastructure. So it's really robust, it's scalable, you just need to add it and it's communicate on the familiar ways to all the developers. So that, that's one part. And also what is important, yeah, presentation layer. So you need to share data with the BI team, data warehouse, to be integrated with the other, other portals, maybe, maybe to build something custom from the tools, dashboards, I don't know, or to have just the management of the, all of these APIs because when we started, it was easy. We had only one application with a couple of models, but now there is two, two applications, two use cases with a lot of, uh, lot of modules. So it's becoming a, a challenge to manage all of that. But I think with this uh, infrastructure, it's easier than when you have silos approach uh, only. Also, you can expose, that's it didn't done, but they can be easily done uh, through APIs, maybe to some, you can offer something to partners or I don't know, external companies, etc. to reuse that data and maybe bring some new value to the web mobile. So it's a platform and everything we create, this concept is com communicating with, with the others. And of, of course, machine learning data science. So we can give the access to the data to the data scientists and they can bring their, they can build their small apps that I don't know, like anomaly detection. It's a small app on top of Sara, but you can maybe use for a SAM tool or a Trunkets tool or some other tool because you can share uh, in the, in the, this concept. Or I don't know, maybe some other, other models. So that's something we came up and we start build like, build like that with uh, these technologies. Uh, it's, sorry, if I may, may just add here, a uh, colleague, uh, again, Mario, from, uh, who's uh, uh, speaking this morning, uh, he's from uh, TAG, which is a uh, mother company of Web Mobile, and uh, it's two years after that they are designing the architecture and they are designing the uh, like the standards for the whole group and we're just fitting in so what we did like what is it two years ago yeah, something like that something like that it just simply fits into what they are now designing so we did that that was like uh, a proof for us from uh, from from Mario and from the new team that we did a good job in in this definition of you know in the previous slide what we did yeah that that's that's also was idea so you can share among the group all oh, that's eight opcos imagine that eight different systems say different uh, ceos and everything so very complex but we we can now manage it and technology that we are using for data lake hadoop hadoop is uh, i don't know the standard for the data lake i'll see like that maybe there are some other cloud tools but we want to use Hadoop because we want to have on-premise everything to be secured and uh, with mobile have uh, access and control. Apache Spark for this data integration part and for some advanced analytics on the big data and maybe for some streaming. We have also one streaming use case recently, so processing uh, large amounts of data uh, in streaming manner. So we we need to cover all use cases and let's say with Hadoop and Spark, we can cover a lot of use cases because uh, I don't know, Spark is like a Swiss knife, so you can do a lot of things. And uh, what we bring to Whip Mobile is the Python because we're a Pythonic company. We like to code in Python, even in Apache Spark is coding in Python, some better Scala. So Goran start to use Python even uh, the colleague from the radio access network start using Python in SQL. So something that's something new for the company like Rick Mobile, maybe that's, he's not an IT guy. And also we love Postgres and Elasticsearch for some applications. All is open source, I, as you can see. So no need to extra licenses and you can maybe fix something if you know. And for the machine learning, we now a lot of use, we use a lot of uh, TensorFlow because we are now heavily working on this anomaly detection for the network. 
and the network is very complex uh, for one telco, so we need uh, complex algorithms. Also, we use Python scikit-learn and other, other frameworks that are written in Python. And uh, we decided uh, to uh, our dashboards be custom, and we choose uh, Angular for that. So we we have we covered all the stack from the as I showed you from the bottom to to up. So everything everything is there, and uh, you can now easily add new app. Just even you can do data science in that. Another language, but this is something that we decided is the best. I think it's also the group strategy for the tools. Uh, when I spoke with Mario, so we find the. It is. Tool. It is. So. So. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So questions. What? There was no questions. No, well, there are two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will start with a serious one. Yeah. Oh. Uh, what was the biggest obstacle you had to overcome in order to realize your project? <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that one. Uh, what was the biggest obstacle? At the beginning, it was the infrastructure, but that was sold like you know easily. Uh, then it was, uh, it's not, it's never technical issue. Uh, that was the technical part. Uh, the, the most difficult part was to understand, uh, to understand the domain. So uh, for me, uh, I, I was at that time eight years in telco. I didn't know anything about radio. I didn't know anything about their KPIs, their, uh, the data that comes from, from the uh, cells. Uh, that was the tricky part. And uh, definitely for them, that was the that was the, the most complex part. So to to get familiar with the domain and to get to know, uh, to, you know, to somehow discover what you can extract from this data, that was the difficult part. But I think we were, we, were, we have happy we are happy because we have support from the Natalie Daly, CTO. She's pushing this project, so that's very important, and that's why we don't have. Big challenges. Uh, well, more or less, that's what that that's the reason uh, we solved the, 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 these technical questions uh, pretty fast. So you want to say that uh, top-down support in a company definitely, is very important. Definitely, yes. Uh, <laughs> the second question: oh, You still have time to pose questions. We we have uh, another five minutes for this slot, um, but this one is a bit funny. <laughs> is it necessary to have a beard in order to work with big data? <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> It, is it, I will ask, answer this one. Uh, we had uh, one HR game, uh, uh, like small team building, uh, where we need to sit in, in, in some you know, circle. Uh, one is kicked out, and the, the rest of the group uh, talks about him or her. And in the end of the blah, 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 in the end of the story, you get some tasks to, to fulfill until they talk about your personality, about what's good, what's bad, and it's usually just fake story. Uh, but but um, my task was to align the pictures in a corporate directory, which is without beard 10 years ago, uh, with this. So I'm not sure which direction to go, either to shave the beard or to, or to change the picture. To change the picture. Yeah, what do you think? Like, <laughs> should I change the picture? <laughs> yeah. Yes, you need, you need the, the, the beard for, uh, for data science and be data. data. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, we received another question. Uh, data lake in PII, uh, is that a problem in regards to GDPR or you have no PII in the data lake? What is PII? Who posed the question? Personal information something. Personal information? Uh, first, we are not, we are, we are not uh, first we are uh, anonymizing everything, almost everything that is, uh, that has to be anonymized. We talked to our, I think over the last two years, I talked to uh, the, the legal department more than, I don't know, more than with colleagues. So what do we do with this? What do we do with this? Uh, important thing is that uh, personal information is anonymized, then aggregated. And the second thing we are not, uh, we are using this in order to, that's the other tool, uh, the SAM, is just like CRM. 
So the front end is like CRM, but it's extension to the, C to the classical CRM because it has data like uh, what was the what was the average throughput uh, for this customer in last two hours. That's not something we need to hide from our internal users that are about to support customer, and that's that's the value that we that we uh, put into these tools, and that's doesn't have to be anonymized. It's not personal information. Thank you very much. Um, if there are any other questions from the audience, we can also take uh, a few with the microphone. If not, then thank you very much thank for you. your lecture. And uh, on behalf of the organizers, I would like to issue the certificate. Thank you. Voila, voila, voila. Voila.